Yeah, okay, so we're going to be making a pulled chicken chili, um, which is one of our favorites to kind of do around the house just because it's not too demanding in terms of work. Um, also, again, this is a theme here. This is going to freeze really, really well. We're going to be able to make multiple meals out of this by just putting in the work once. Um, and it's just really nice kind of comfort food too, right? So, you know, we're talking about, you know, as a caregiver, you're putting in like a lot of, you know, work, uh, caring for someone, um, you know, sort of taking that comfort for yourself too is, is also really important. So this is one of my favorites and we are going to start off with the flavor um, and we're going to make this really nice spice rub. So I'm actually going to put this screen down here. I'm uh, using uh, boneless skinless chicken breast. You can use chicken thighs as well. Um, you can go bone in. It's just then you're going to have to kind of sort through it after to remove the bones. I think it's just a lot easier to just get the boneless. Um, and then for the flavor, we're going to make this really nice kind of chili, smoky chili rub, which is, again, one of my go-tos. Uh, so I'm going to start off with some dried oregano, which has this really, really nice punch of flavor, about a tablespoon or so here. And what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing it, actually as I'm putting it in the plate between my fingers, um, that will actually help to activate some of the essential oils. And you're going to, like, once you do it, you'll know, because you're gonna start to get this hit of oregano. Um, you're just gonna make it a lot more flavorful. Next thing, this is gonna add a nice punch of smokiness. We're adding some smoked paprika. Um, if you've watched our shows before, we use this quite a bit. We love it just because, again, adding this nice, rich flavor, but there's no heat to it. So if you don't like spice, if you don't like heat, um, then you know, give this one a shot because it does have this really nice sort of barbecue-y kind of flavor going on. We're going to go with some chili powder. Again, this is mild. Um, this is going to be a milder version. If you did want something a little spicier, you do like spicy, spicier food, then you can yeah, definitely experiment with that. And, add something a little bit spicier, but the chili powder is going to be on the mild side. And then a little bit of cinnamon and there's some cumin in here as well. Now, I had these spices separate. Make it easier for yourself. If you have already like a nice little chili mix spice or if there's just like one or two of these, if you only have one to choose from out of all of this, I would say go with the smoked paprika. Um, that just brings a ton of flavor and you don't have to add too much else. But if you did have some of the other spices lying around, it's a nice addition. Um, and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil to this, just so that it mixes together well, so that it will coat the chicken. All right, so now I'm gonna just use tongs and just put a nice, Generous amount of that seasoning on both sides. Yeah, and this is like a really great. Um, so what I would say here is um, using herbs and spices to flavor the foods that you're eating um, is a really great way of using those antioxidants, right? So we know that you know, all plant foods have lots of antioxidants, lot of phytonutrients. Um, again, these are the components of the plant. So, you know, your herbs and your spices are coming from plants um, and they're great at really boosting that flavor. Um, and so, you know, a lot of, we, we talk about flavoring food uh, with sodium, with salt and fat. Um, and this is just something that you want to generally look at, right? Like when you're buying packaged food, there's lots of salt in there. So this is a way to boost the flavor without adding that salt or fat, right? Um, and, you know, you're keeping things lean. So often, so again, not only caring, you're caring for somebody else, you're caring for yourself, you want your food to taste good. Oftentimes we see that, you know, people when they're going through cancer treatment or after can have some taste changes. So again, boosting those flavors through different herbs and spices is a great um, option. Now, I'll talk a little bit about a, uh, an ingredient that's coming up, unless Jerry, you want me to, to wait. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what, jump into it. Let me just say real quick. So I added it to a pan, um, just a little bit of oil, 
uh, medium to medium high heat. I don't, because of the spices, I don't want to burn them. So if the heat is too high, it's just going to burn the spices on the outside. It's going to make them bitter. Uh, don't want that. So medium heat um, and just want a little bit of color on either side. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do here. So about a minute or two per side. Yeah. Go ahead, Seth. Um, okay. So just about the protein, um, right? You know, again, you want to make sure that every meal or snack kind of thing has protein. Maybe you're not going to have chicken for a snack, but just as a kind of a, a guideline. And I would say like you could cook it here and then pause and then use this chicken in a salad, a soup, a sandwich. You could freeze it. I know we're going to continue on, but um, chicken is one of those things that's super, super versatile and could have many uses. Um, the, the key here is making sure that you have that protein. Um, it helps build muscles. It helps provide energy. You're getting that iron folate, sorry, that iron, the B12, um, that are really important, especially to help manage fatigue. So whether you're caring for somebody who is fatigued through the treatments or after. Um, but again, you know, caring for someone is not um, as easy, right? It can, there could be exhaustion, there could be feelings of fatigue. So, you know, making sure that you're well nourished and getting those nutrients such as vitamin B12 um, and, and iron and folate um, into your day to day. And one way to do that is through chicken um, or any uh, plant uh, animal based food. So it could be any of the red meats as well, though you want to limit the amount that you're having there. Fish is great. Um, eggs are great um, in order to get that B12 and, and iron. So super important. Um, the next nutrient that I wanted to talk about is, so this is a one pot, pot, pot dish, um, and we're gonna be adding some beets in here. So beets are that wonderful purple color. Again, lots of phytonutrients there. Um, and they're also lower in calories, despite the fact that they are quite sweet. Okay, so for those who are um, managing their weight and wanna make sure that they're getting all of those kind of check boxes again, lots of fiber here as well. Um, this is a really great um, food to use. Um, and that purpley red color comes from um, a compound that's known as bet betalanes. <laughs> and in many studies suggests also has a protective effect on your heart and cancer. So just something to note, um, they could be cooked, they could be raw, you could use both. Obviously in this case, we're gonna be something cooked. Um, so just something that, you know, again, adding in lots of that color. So I'm just finishing up um, the last, you know, 30 seconds or so searing the other side of the chicken. And I'm gonna mention as well, this is obviously one pot dish. We're gonna be starting it in this pan, we're gonna be finishing it in this pan in the oven. Okay. Um, however, you can definitely make this with a slow cooker, with you know, Instapot, any of those devices where there's a little more hands off. Um, and that way you're just adding all the ingredients uh, into the pot with your liquid and you're going to set the timer for something like this, like the six hours on um, low or sometimes medium, depending on the setting that you have. Should be enough until it shreds, the chicken shreds apart easily. easily. Um, so you can do it either way. The only advantage of doing it in a pan like this, where we can get that searing action, is we're gonna get that extra little bit of sort of caramel caramelization, a little bit of that crust, a little bit of that extra flavor. Um, so that's the only difference, it's completely up to you. But sometimes if it's easier to manage a meal through a crock pot or like a slow cooker, then absolutely, you can definitely approach this same recipe uh, that way. Okay, so these look good. I'm gonna remove them from the pan. And you're gonna see some of that spice rub is gonna stick to the bottom of the pan, which is okay. Just keep an eye on your heat. If you think it's a little too high, then lower it because I don't want that to burn, right? Um, and then to that pan, we're gonna quickly add our veg. This can be whatever you want. Um, today we'll have some peppers and onions, keeping it pretty simple, um, but they can also be even frozen. They have frozen peppers and onions now too. That's, you know, the beautiful thing. And just add it directly in here. 
and then use your you know spoon or tongs to kind of <laughs> move it around and scrape up some of that seasoning. If you see that it is sticking a little bit, like the seasoning is sticking a little bit, add just a small touch of liquid at this point. I don't want to add too much because I want to get some color on my veg. So I'll just add a little bit and that way I can scrape up any of the seasoning that's sticking I don't want again. I don't want it to burn. Beautiful. And we just want to just soften these up a little bit. So it'll take, you know, two minutes. Um, and then to that, I'm going to add some more garlic. Love our garlic here. Um, and I'm just, just crushing them with the side of my knife. I'm not really doing anything. I'll bring you down here. Anything too fancy. Um, I kind of want that whole garlic to slowly cook and slowly soften uh, as it finishes in the oven. If you're not a fan of finding like a giant clove, I think it's like kind of a fun game, but if you don't like that game, then you can de definitely chop that up or mince it up so that it's a little bit and it's on the finer side. Too, right, like you could pick it out after you're cooked. Yeah, for sure, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, what I love about it is once, like garlic, obviously in its raw state is gonna bring a lot of heat, a lot of punch, when it's slow cooking, and this is going to go in the oven for like another 90 minutes, um, it's going to soften the garlic. It's going to become like a little bit sweeter. Um, and so it's going to take a lot of that heat away. And it's kind of enjoyable just like that. But if you're not a big fan of it in its whole state, yeah, you can take it out after. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, so there's our veg looking great. To this, we're going to add some tomato puree. Now, you can do this, this is from canned, right? So, again, we're making it easy. Um, and this is, these are actually whole tomatoes that I kind of just crushed up a little bit. Um, but you can use like a puree. They have a canned puree, jar puree tomatoes, a couple cups in here. I'm not a huge fan of the already pre-diced tomatoes. Um, cause they are usually when they're canned and they're pre-diced, they're preserved so that they don't break down really well, and I, I kind of want this, I want these tomatoes to kind of break down and get soft, okay? So we're gonna go with the, the whole or puree tomatoes, and then we're gonna add a little bit of stock to that as well. You can also just add water, uh, but like a chicken stock or a veg stock. And I have about two cups. Again, it really depends on how much you're making, but a recipe like this, I mean, it's really hard to break, right? That, that's that's a beautiful thing about it. Um, you can add a little bit more chicken, a little less chicken. You can definitely throw like a can of chickpeas in here would be really, really nice. And we're gonna return the chicken, that seared, beautiful seared chicken inside. So I, again, you just want enough liquid so that it almost completely covers the chicken. You can see a little bit of it still peeking out here. That's perfect. It's exactly what I want because we're going to cook this the rest of the way with the lid on. And that's going to sort of braise in there. Lower heat. And it's going to get really, really nice and tender, really nice and soft so that we can just shred it, pull it apart really easily. Um, and that's why, you know, even for using chicken breast, which can, you know, be notorious for being on the drier side. By cooking it in a liquid, by braising it in a flavorful liquid like this, um, it's still gonna stay really nice and moist and juicy, uh, and we don't have to worry about it drying out, which is great. So there is the, pretty much, that's it. We're gonna cover it with a lid, and I'm gonna put this in the oven, 350 degrees, um, and that's gonna cook for about 90 minutes. Oh, no, wait. Sorry, I forgot an ingredient. I, I was going to say. Did an amazing job talking about all the benefits of beets. I've got that or beets. And uh, we're not like promoting a brand or anything, but frozen beets are an amazing option. They're already kind of sliced, chopped, peeled, really, really easy, really accessible. Fresh. Just yeah. as nutritious as fresh. So it's something that we really love using. Um, and it's a little different for a chili, right? You might be thinking corn. Absolutely. You had corn, add beans. Uh, but the beets, 
I love the color it actually gives off and makes this chili look super, super like dark and rich. Um, so great suggestion by Steph, and I think I'm gonna continue doing it going forward. So we're gonna add about a cup. Yeah, these are also great. So, you know, I think that like, there's not that many vegetables or fruit that you get that purple color. So beets are an awesome um, option. Um, they're also high in vitamin C and potassium, right? So um, those are nutrients that you definitely want to include. Potassium, you know, anybody who has, you know, high blood pressure, potassium something that you want to include more vegetables and fruit of. Um, again, if anybody is, um, uh, you know, so, so, so this is just something that, you know, definitely kind of trying to boost those nutrients wherever you can. Um, and throwing something in that's frozen is super, super easy when you're preparing these batched meals um, in advance. Okay. So we got it in the oven. It's going to slow cook for some time. Um, and this is really great because, you know, you're able to kind of do some other things in the meantime. Um, but I do always like to say, make sure you set an alarm so that, you know, you don't forget about what's going on in the kitchen. <laughs> um, and there you have it. All right, I'm gonna adjust the cameras here. So this has been slow cooking for 90 minutes. And what I would suggest, after about 90 minutes, you can shred the chicken. And so I did that after 90 minutes and you can take a fork, some tongs, uh, and you can see the color on this is super rich because of the beets, like give it this really, really nice color. Um, and you can see the chicken, how like it's just falling apart. This chicken breast is just super, super tender. So we're gonna shred it apart. And what I like to do is actually, after you shred it, put it back in the oven, uh, raise the heat to about 400 with the lid off and keep it in there for about another five to 10 minutes. And you're going to get uh, a little bit more of the reduction in the sauce. So it's a little bit thicker and you're going to get a little bit more of that caramelization on top. Okay. Um, and so you can see the color here is just like beautiful, just really, really nice, really mouthwatering. Um, and again, freeze this portion it, um, you know, let it cool down portion, put it in the freezer. What I like to do is put them in these box. I know, talked about them before so you throw them in these like little muffin tins especially these like silicone ones are awesome portion some of that chili out in here freeze it till solid and then it'll pop out to like a puck this and then you can pop those into a freezer bag and then that way when you have to you know make a quick meal don't have the energy don't have the time warm this up in the microwave warm it up in the stove um, and you have a great dish yeah. Jared, just one question. So, um, you know, we often talk about when you're, because when people are um, from people, um, sometimes patients are experiencing um, issues with, like they get, like smells can be off-putting. So um, if you're out there and caring for a friend or you're a family, a loving family member, um, you know, making foods outside of the house <laughs> where the person is living can be super super helpful right um and 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 this kind of um just decreases that aroma i mean obviously opening up a window or you know making sure the person's not home when you're cooking but if you're bringing something that's also a great option um but i will say that you know this specific dish you know because it's covered and you're cooking it for a long time um you know, you're trapping the smells inside are there any other suggestions for this specific dish for those people who are caring for someone else and you know might have an off put to different smells and if you are cooking inside yeah yeah so i mean it would be definitely be cognizant of the some of the aromatics do you, that you do choose right so onion and garlic being yeah. two of the ones that are going to bring a lot of aromas into the house for sure um so you might want to avoid those maybe some certain spices obviously depends on um you know the individual and what is sort of bothersome in terms of smells 
But in terms of the cooking process alone, the more you can cover it, the better. So we're slow cooking it in the oven. Already it being in the oven is going to help to trap some of the aromas. The lid on top as well is going to help. And then what you can do as sort of an extra layer is you can create what we call a cartouche, um, which is parchment paper that you would just cut off a piece, parchment paper, and fit it snug into the uh, your pan, okay? Just so it touches the surface of your ingredients. Uh, and then you can even, um, you can cut a, a steam hole. You don't have to in that case because it's going to slow cook in the oven. But put this onto the pan and then put a lid on top. Mm, um, and again, you're going to still smell it, but it will help to hold some of the aromas intact. Parchment paper is one that we cook with often, even when we make like fish pouches, and like, you know, cooking in papillot. Um, and making that parchment pouch does help to keep some of the aromas down. So hopefully that would help. All right, so that's it. I mean, we're finishing it up. Put it onto a nice little grilled tortilla here. Maybe finish it with some fresh herbs, some red onion, maybe a little bit of queso, cheese, or whatever you like. But that is our nice little pulled chicken chili with beets.